Today, I will create a different video in response to requests I received, especially after the publication of an article on the BBC about Japan. The article, titled How Japan Changed from a Land of the Future to Trapped in the Past by Rupert Wingfield Hayes, addresses some issues previously discussed on my channel. Upon reading the article, I recognized its relevance and decided to share my opinion on Japan, adding insights about the country. The article's title draws attention to Japan's shift from a promising land of the future to a country trapped in the past. The author, a British correspondent for the BBC in Tokyo, highlights observations about the changes he witnessed during his 10-year stay in Japan. The text discusses peculiarities of Japanese society, such as the devaluation of houses over time, the economic challenge faced since the 80s, and resistance to change. Despite being the third largest economy globally, Japan faces significant challenges, including an aging and declining population contributing to economic stagnation since the 90s. This stagnation should not be confused with poverty, as I emphasize to avoid misunderstandings. While some may compare Japan's situation to other countries, it is crucial to understand the distinction between an economically stagnant country and an economically disadvantaged one. From the end of World War II until the 90s, Japan experienced remarkable economic growth, especially in the 60s, during the so-called Japanese economic miracle. This momentum was partly driven by U.S. assistance, aiming to keep Japan as an ally in the Cold War. American investments and Japanese government policies fueled the country's rapid economic growth. However, in the 90s, the economic bubble burst, leading Japan into a period of economic stagnation that persists today. This stagnation is a significant challenge as the country struggles to maintain high living standards. Upon arriving in Japan in 1993, Rupert witnessed a country that seemed exceptionally prosperous compared to other Asian nations. Tokyo stood out for its cleanliness and organization, contrasting with other Asian cities like Hong Kong and Taipei. The Japanese capital, with its towering corporate towers like Mitsubishi and Sony, reflected a mature and influential country. The author highlights how, in the 80s, Japan was seen as a rising economic leader, to the point where many believed it would eventually surpass the United States in global influence. This perception even influenced the cyberpunk genre, where Japanese metropolises were often portrayed as futuristic and powerful centers. However, the current reality shows that Japan faces economic and demographic challenges, with persistent stagnation since the 90s. This narrative emphasizes how past expectations contrast with the present reality of the country. In the 80s, the belief that Japan would become a global influence led American and European parents to encourage their children to learn Japanese. During this period, Japan recovered from World War II, dominated the global industry, and experienced an economic bubble. However, in 1991, the bubble burst, resulting in a stock market collapse and a decline in property prices. Despite the efficiency associated with bullet trains and Toyota's production, Japanese bureaucracy is daunting, and large amounts of public money are allocated to questionable utility activities. In 2022, the narrator discovered the curious story behind customized manhole covers throughout Japan. While these covers are appreciated as works of art, each one can cost up to $4,700. Details like customized poles and streetlights contribute to the aesthetic beauty of Japanese cities. However, in the face of economic stagnation since the 90s, questions arise about whether such excessively extravagant spending, used on meticulous details often unnoticed by people, could be directed more efficiently. The duality between visible cultural wealth and economic stagnation raises questions about priorities and resource utilization in Japan. Japan's economic challenges have resulted in the world's largest public debt. The aging population struggles to retire due to pressure on pensions and health care. During the driver's license renewal, the narrator shares an experience in a mandatory safety lecture for traffic offenders in the last five years. These seemingly educational lectures have a secondary purpose, to create jobs for retired traffic guards. This reflects a strategy by the Japanese government to address the financial survival challenge of the elderly. The flawed pension system results in many elderly individuals without resources, 
prompting the government to encourage private companies to create jobs for seniors. This practice is evident in various situations, such as the excessive presence of elderly traffic guards during street renovations or light bulb replacements. All of this highlights the inefficiency of the state and the padding of the public sector, causing Japan's debt to increase each decade. Therefore, many economists and geopolitics experts argue that despite economic challenges, Japan prefers to prioritize the maintenance of traditions, aesthetics, and symbolic jobs over more pragmatic policies to boost economic growth and improve the quality of life. Many of these issues could be resolved if foreign immigration were facilitated in the country, but the government prefers to ease entry only for immigrants with Japanese descent, rather than opening borders to any nationality to secure less competitive labor for jobs less sought after by Japanese citizens, such as construction work. What is your opinion on all of this? Do you think the Japanese government is right in allocating a significant portion of the country's economy to superficial spending and, furthermore, making it difficult for foreigners to enter? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, it helps us a lot. Until next time.